You buy Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior. Oh, well, uh, hello, good evening, welcome. Uh, this is Ghana Tonight. We are live from our news up here at Desawe Kanda. Also live on TV Ghana on Facebook, DSV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Well, coming up tonight, the Ghana Black Stars have drawn in a 2-2 game with the Pharaohs of Egypt, thanks to Kudus with a brilliant double, but where does that leave Ghana in the AFCON? There are so many questions on the minds of you out there as well. Stay with us. We have a conversation on Ghana tonight. Also, the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, and the Ministry of Roads and that's Ministry of Transport on a coalition course over transport fares. While the GPRTU has announced an increment, the ministry has also asked the public to disregard that increment. We understand there was a crunch meeting today and an agreement has been reached. We'll tell you exactly what the way forward will be. Stay with us. We're also in Boko in the Upper East region this evening where the renewed conflict in the area has claimed lives with many living in fear while others are fleeing the area. We hear from um, the Member of Parliament for the Boko Central constituency, Mama Yaga, <coughs> is our guest here on Ghana Tonight, as always. Uh, would also touch base with what's happening with the universities, that's the Senior Staff Association of the Universities, Public Universities in this country. They have declared an indefinite strike. The National Labor Commission summoned them for a meeting today. They did not turn up for that meeting. They have an explanation for that. We'll get into all of that here on Ghana Tonight. As always, you're an integral part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and X. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Three point six million women aged twenty to forty nine, representing fifty percent of women in the age bracket, are obese and overweight, according to the Ghana Demographic and Health Survey Report twenty twenty two. This health challenge has been attributed to poor eating habits and improper lifestyle. We have about fifty percent of our women aged fifteen to forty nine years that are consuming unhealthy food, and this has translated in we seeing that about fifty percent of our women are either um, obese or overweight. Specifically, about twenty two percent of them that are obese, and twenty eight percent of them that are overweight. <music> Medical students evacuated from Sudan are calling on government to fulfill its promise of integrating them into the Ghanaian medical school system. Some of these students say they are in distress after nine months of waiting. We finally find yourself in medical school thinking you are going to change the narrative of your family. And this happens. <laughs> you are uh, a student who's in this kind of situation and you don't have anything doing or anything going or you don't you don't really have any handiwork to do you you become like a, a liability to your family uh, first you become a liability to the family and you also become a liability to your uh, society tension is brewing among members of the teachers and education workers union tewu Leadership of the union is requesting government to pay the nine-month arrears owed the second-tier pension scheme as the delay is impacting negatively on retirees' investment portfolios. Tewu of TUC Ghana is in court as part of the due process to get the leadership of the breakaway groups to account for their stewardship during which tenure as local executives of Tewu of TUC Ghana with the Labor Department, with the National Labor Commission, with all the relevant agencies. And we have been given and granted the right 
to negotiate for the people in these areas. Delay in increasing fares may collapse their business due to new taxes and charges by the government, the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU. In response, were statesmen by the Transport Ministry to the public to disregard any purported upward adjustment in transport fares, insist increment has become necessary to avoid losses. I'll keep them quiet, or we are delayed. We're delaying ourselves. It ends up by killing slowly our own business. The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, is suspected to relocate the Greater Accra Regional Office from the 37 Military Hospital area by end of February. This follows the completion of a new office complex for the DVLA in the Ga East Municipality. That collaboration was to ensure that uh, DVLA, where they are at the airport area, they will be relocated. Uh, to this place, but then not just relocating them to, to this place, but we are to ensure that they get a better facility, more conducive environment for them to do their work. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next. Well, the Ghana Black Stars have drawn 2-2 with the pharaohs of Egypt. Thanks to Kudus. Mohamed with a brilliant double for the Black Stars. But where does that leave the Black Stars in this whole uh, Africa Cup of Nations tournament? And that's the conversation tonight. And I'm, in fact, I was just hoping that we're going to be talking about a win for the Black Stars. I have, <laughs> I've lost my voice. Forgive me. There's been celebrations um, or, or for the two goals that Kudos Mohamed has scored. But uh, Mr. Michael OTJ, who is our group head of news uh, here at Media General, has gracefully decided to stay up and, and join us in studio. And one of the celebrated sports journalists in this country. It's good to have you. <coughs> so, T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lost your voice. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a while. I mean, we, we had this kind of performance, at least from the Black Stars, in, in a top-tier tournament, like, like the Africa Cup of Nations. But, I mean, what's your own overview of, of the game itself from where you sat? I think it was not good enough. Mm -hmm. I think you had um, mm -hmm. one very good player, one star boy who dragged the team along. Um, a few good supporting acts, uh, but you saw evidence of everything wrong with the Black Stars in the present state there. You saw a team that just couldn't defend, a team that made incredibly bad errors mm -hmm. in, in conceding two goals, a team that's thrown away twice leads that, uh, that gave them victory within sight. Uh, you saw a team that has now gone six games at the Nations Cup without winning any. A team that has won a game of the Nations Cup since 2019. A team that in the last, you know, three Nations Cup games has drawn with Egypt and now has not lo lost to Comoros and Cap Verde. And a team that will go into the final game having to win and having to do the usual match. So uh, when the euphoria of, of Starboy Kudus dies down, and I thought it was incredible today, the first goal was really practically out of nothing. Absolutely. The second goal was down to really good work by Dennis Odoy True. and Kudus picking his moment well. Mm. But the overall performance of the team needs a lot more working on. And when we get down from the highs of the moment, we realize that this is still a team that needs a lot of work done. It definitely needs a lot of work done. But I mean, let's go into the first goal that we conceded. I, I, what was Nyaki Williams doing at the defense? Was it upon the instruction no, of the I, coach? You know, and obviously you can't blame him for that kind of a back pass. He's not a very typical defender. Can he get away with it at any point based on what you, you, you know about 
how so partly what this you, should happen. Partly what you do is that you track back, you know, you, you know, the, the, the time, the era period where the, the, the striker just sits in the opposition mm -hmm. half and tries to get a goal is gone. So Inaki Williams was doing what a lot of modern day forwards, modern day wingers sometimes are asked to do, which is to step back often and as much as you can when you've stepped back to now help with the defensive duties. Mm -hmm. So that's what Inaki Williams was doing. So he was just unlucky with that back pass? He didn't have awareness of where he was, which was the problem. Because you raise your head one step, he could easily have been seen that there was, there, there, there was an unrushing trio of at least of Egyptian players, mm. and then he could have played the ball. But this has been typical of the Black Stars in this tournament. Bukhari commits almost the same error. Absolutely. In the last game, there were two uh, errors of similar nature. Somebody needs to do something about that. And, and uh, is it a coaching problem, you think? Um, it's a concentration problem. Concentration problems can be solved by coaching. And I think that's something that we may need to solve as time goes on. Well, and I'm also uh, looking at the, the, the defense itself, right? And how it was set up. And the people in there, the players who were set up by the coach for the defense. Could we have had a better pair of defenders in the persons of the, the back two that, that we have? That is... Um, um, the, 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 we had the, the back two. No, you mean, you mean, you mean that the, the uh, central just, defensive pair of Salisu and Jiku? Absolutely. I think in many ways they are best players. Today they were not the, the most error prone. You know, Jiku was the best player in the first game. I thought he played brilliantly today as well. Um, I thought overall he was, um, he was pretty good. Uh, look, the, the bigger problem with the Blasters really is that you need, in a team, you need multiple characters like mm -hmm. Kudus to do well. When the Blasters was at his peak in a game like this, it was either Kojo Asamoa taking the game by the scruff of the neck yeah. or Asamoa Jan taking the game by the scruff of the neck, something like that. And at the moment, we don't seem to have any of that. And it is creating big time problems for us. Now, but if you see the level of, to some inconsistency in terms of the kind of structure that the coach wanted to play okay you bring in Bukhari right in the second half he commits an error you take him off and then you bring us does that concern you that does worry you no I, I mean, think from where, where I, actually, I say that I got I, a bit I, concerned really I, I, I kind of liked that decision by the coach it was almost as if to say look boys I'm not I'm not a softie I can make the hardcore decisions. You, you should make because that. because yeah. really, Bukhari had spent a few minutes on, commits the error for the for the for the equalizer yes. out of nothing. Has the opportunity to get into the balls, drive in and cross balls two three times, and every time he hits the first man, he doesn't get anywhere. In the space of fifteen minutes that he lasted, he had been completely ineffective, and I think the coach just wanted an opportunity to say to the rest of the team. If you're not good enough, you're not playing. Yes. I mean, can, can this team get any better with the kind of mindset that you saw today? I mean, that's where my, no, my, this my team concern can is. Get, this team can get better with better concentration with, 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 by sticking in a bit more. I don't know what instructions they're playing to, but it seems that too many players want to take one, two, three touches before they pass the mm -hmm. ball. That's what put Bukhari in trouble. You saw even after that, that Gideon Mensa preferred to play out from the back. Absolutely. So there is a problem that needs to be. It's obvious that the Black Stars can't play that way and they need to do everything possible to ensure that they are not playing that way on a regular basis. Now, we, we have a number of reactions. In fact, um, so many people who have been uh, having this conversation on, on social media and we're monitoring that quite closely. Jerome Ochery, um, Hopefully joins us as well. He is a sports journalist, former editor of Kotoko Express. He watched this game as well. Um, but we're going to be running up in a bit. We have the last group game to play. 
Yeah. We've all been reduced to mathematicians again. It's not simple math. Unfortunately. It's simple math. Unfortunately. Math. People who didn't like mathematics in school, I see them doing a lot uh, of... The nature, the, of the, about, the, nature of the, the nature of the group is math. For, look, Egypt has two points. Yes. Ghana has one. True. Cape Verde and Mozambique play tomorrow, depending on how it ends. If Cape Verde wins, they have one place sealed. It becomes a direct fight between them and, and, and Egypt. The advantage is that in this, there will be at least a few teams who finish as the third place best teams, which means in this tournament, four points could be good enough to go through. My point is simple. Whatever the mass for Ghana is fairly simple. Mm. You go in there, you win. Tomorrow, if Kivet and Mozambique ends in a draw, even better. But whatever happens in that final game, Ghana simply needs to go in there, win. In that, in that final game, Ghana simply needs to go in there. I think you can realistically ask questions of whether this team has shown a capacity to be able to win at this level. Mm. I mentioned six games at the Nations Cup without a win. I mentioned games against Comoros where we've struggled. I mentioned how we've struggled to beat teams like Madagascar and the rest. So that's where the problem is. But it's fairly simple. It's Do not you see us going much. through um, beyond the group stages? I said there was no way we were losing today. I think we'll go through. We'll go through? Yes, I think so. You're one of the few hopeful people I mean, <laughs> that I've seen. But anyway, but you're saying something that I am not, I mean, from the sports perspective, and I respect that. Thank you so much for coming. Michael OTJ is a group head here at News, here at Media Journal, and very celebrated sports journalist here in, the, in this country, and sharing with his thoughts from what he saw um, the Black Stars do today um, here on Ghana Tonight. But let's cross over to Nima, where that's the home of Kudus. Mohammed will get some reactions from there shortly. But also, um, now let's quickly go to Osu, where my colleague Job Laboja um, is there for us, gauging the mood after the, the march. Job, uh, tell me, what was going on where you are? All right, I've read, uh, I must tell you that... Uh, it was a bit uh, of a mixed feeling for most people here. And then, in as much as some people were uh, surprised about Black Star's performance, others too were kind of disappointed because they felt like this should have been a game that they, we should win hands down, looking at our previous performance. In fact, the turnouts at the sports, the events or the viewing centers here was a bit low because of the low hopes that people had in the Black Stars, uh, the information, information that we picked on the, on the ground. And I'm, I still have some of the uh, fans here with me, some people I watch the game with, and they've been sharing their, uh, 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 their, 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 their experience and mood and how they feel about the entire game. And I'd I like one to join me soon. Hello, lady. Uh, please, um, so please uh, kindly tell us uh, how you saw the entire game. What, what, was the, what was the feeling for you? My feeling is that uh, Black Star didn't put no effort. Like they scored the goal and then they relaxed. They give the Egypt a chance to also give their own goals. Like if they put no effort, they should have just scored like three nails. Or... Do, you, do, you, do you think Black Stars will make it? It's, it's up to them. I think they'll make it, but it's up to them if they'll put no effort. All right, thank you very much. I would like to engage another fan here who uh, is, has Ghana flag on his shirt, and he, he's, he also has something to say. Please, uh, how did you see the Blasters game? It, they didn't meet your expectation. Yes, actually, I really predicted before the match that it's going to be two two. Wow. Yes, I did that. And if you ask the people we watch four weeks here, my prediction is always coming true. Wow. The first match, I told them Cape Verde is going to score at the 90th minute. And it just happened. Today, they were like, come on, you should have, I mean, be opening a Telegram account and then be giving it to us. I mean, I knew from the game that, yes, uh, Egypt was going to come in hard at us. And we were also going to do our very best. But if they are counter-attacking and their pressure, there's no way we could meet that. So I'm sure that you are, since your prediction is right right now, it means that you are cashing out. But what stood out for you in the entire game? What stood out for you? I think they really did well. The lens, the coach also made some changes to the first lineup, and then it's really about just some clumsy, I mean, losing of balls and then allowing those two goals to come in. It wasn't any, any kind of 
match ball that Egypt put him to uh, get that goal. So I think our defense. Oh. Uh, Job, I appreciate you for this one. Thank you. And, and clearly, um, lots of people with uh, that sense of disappointment and the belief that we could have done better and won this game. I'm one of them, actually. And uh, lots of you out there believe that we could have put a better showing. And there's very little, the, the few mistakes, little mistakes that we made was what has resulted in this 2-2 draw. But we live to fight another day as we always try to keep our hopes alive in this. Let's run up this conversation on a day like this, that the game ended just a few minutes ago. And Jerome Autry um, is a sports journalist. Jerome is joining us as well on Zoom for a quick conversation on the, the Black Star showing today. Um, Jerome, can you hear me? Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Great. Thank you so much for staying up in fact the 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 patience to to be with us since we started thank you first of all i mean yeah. i i put i put a 2-1 prediction on my status since 4 a.m right and i was hoping that that was going to happen so when it was 2-1 my prayers and my hopes went up until that unfortunate mistake really what happened in your view um was it just an indecision on behalf of the defensive setup that we, we saw? Or it was just a mistake that led to that indecision to that first and second goals? In the same fashion, back pass, and then the score. Let, let, let me be very honest with you. I, I didn't watch the game. I was following text commentary because I was in church. And... Some of my friends are wondering how I could be in church while this game was going on. But then I, I have followed so much of the commentary that, I mean, friends were running on the game. And you, you can clearly tell that the team lacks character. I mean, you don't get to this point, take a good lead. I mean, I say it's a good lead because it's very difficult for us to score. And if we are able to score against Egypt, not once, but twice, and they equalize. And their, equali their equalizers come as a result of what you would call uh, defensive, I mean, I mean, unpardonable defensive mistakes, or let's say uh, uh, avoidable situations, then you know that the team lacks character. A team at this level should not surrender its lead the manner we did. And I've seen some of the videos, I mean, just some clips of, of the, the goals of the game. And I can't believe that we surrounded what would have been a, a kudus day, a kudus moment, a kudus victory for Ghana in that fashion. It's unpardonable. Well, I mean, I think God helped you in taking that decision to go to church. <laughs> Instead of watching this agonizing game. I think it was a chore. It was a chore for me, honestly watching this because <laughs> you're sitting on tenterhooks every minute uh, yeah. wondering what was going to happen next and 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 even for me i mean church closed just just at the time could have scored and you could tell from the shouts outside that ghana had scored and everybody was looking around looking for I mean, something to say, and we all best into celebrations. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, Ghanaians like their football. But Absolutely. look, in the morning, I said on your network that Kurus was going to make a difference, and that even if he was half, I mean, half fit, I said on new new day that he should start this game mm. because I mean, he was going to make a difference, and not surprisingly. Two goals. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, the goals won't count much because I mean the points were were shared or mm. the points have been shared, and I think that that is is a down moment. I mean, that's the pain. It's painful, is it not? I mean, I'm I'm wondering what he might be going through right now, having his nursing an injury comes on, plays ninety yeah, minutes you know, at the expense of his his health. He, he may well have given Ghana his best. But you see, once it's a team effort, you can't really... Uh, you, you wouldn't want to blame uh, those players or those individuals who's, uh, through whose fault 
the equalizers came. I mean, the Egyptians were able to get uh, 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 those two goals back. You, you wouldn't want to blame them, but I think we should at this point uh, uh, accept that there's so much work we have to do if we are to perform really as the black stars we want to see. Because, I mean, like I said earlier, you cannot take such a league and surrender it in the manner uh, we did. The point is that sometimes you score, sometimes uh, the goal will be cancelled. But when it is done in a way that is so preventable, so avoidable, mm. then it, it begs a lot of questions. Mm. And I'm sure just as you have started here, the talking point is going to center around the fact that how did we surrender our lead and in the manner we did it. Indeed. And those are those sticking talking points. Jerome, I'm going to leave you to, to go to bed, uh, but you can stay up and still watch us, obviously, to the end. We're close at 11, so thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Jerome Autry is a sports journalist, a f uh, former editor of Kotoko Express. But this is how the table looks like, right? The group that the Black Stars are in. This is it. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. After this match... We're waiting for the Kivet Mozambique game tomorrow, but Ghana sits at the bottom with one point, Mozambique one, Egypt two, and then Kivet three. So, yeah, it's one, one, two, three. Those are the points and how uh, the picture looks like. Well, this is Ghana tonight. Coming up next, quick from football, we focus on Boko in the Apais region where the renewed clashes and the conflict in the area has claimed lives with many living in fear while others are fleeing the area. We hear from the member of parliament for the Boko Central constituency, Mama Yarga, and a journalist as well who's going to be joining us um, here on Ghana tonight. But sad news, one person has been shot dead and we got to know as well which will be confirming shortly from our correspondent that another person has been confirmed dead as a result of the news class so we're talking about two people um, and some other persons are in critical condition following an attack near the Boko police station and then one that happened in Bogatanga as well all in the Paris region on Wednesday now the deceased a male 64 years old was rushed to the Boko Presbyterian Hospital, where he was later pronounced dead. The other two victims, who are females, are receiving treatment at the Vineyard Hospital in Boko. There's been incessant gunfire throughout the night, that was last night, in what is believed to be a reprisal attack following the death of the victim belonging to one of the feuding factions in the protracted conflict in uh, Boko. Now, just last week, the Interior Minister renewed the curfew hours in Boko from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Meanwhile, we understand the security has been beefed up in the municipality to prevent further escalation. And also, we're learning that the Boko Municipal Chief Executive, who is also the head of the Municipal Security Council, Music, was not immediately available for a conversation on this. Thankfully, we have the Member of Parliament for the Boko Central Constituency, Mama Yarga, is joining us on Zoom. Thank you um, for your time here on Ghana tonight. I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the, with the feeling of the Black Stars tonight, but you have a lot more issues to deal with. What briefing have you received, Zayaga, f about this incident, this unfortunate incident that happened last night? That's claimed two lives, we understand. That... We continue to experience this um, uh, situation that has caused so many lives to be lost, so many persons to be injured, hospitalized, um, rendered invalid, and so much property to be lost in Boku uh, Central Constituency. Um, the situation escalated uh, yesterday when um, somebody, some unknown person, uh, fired into a crowd that uh, was peacefully going about uh, their normal duties. 
and then in the process, uh, hit and killed um, somebody who was on the bicycle, and then um, also hit a lady. And then in the evening, there was a very intense gunfire exchange on all sides uh, across the constituency. The military moved in and then um, managed to bring the situation under uh, uh, some control. Um, four days ago, or so five days ago, uh, another gentleman was uh, uh, shot and killed. Uh, the reason why I haven't spoken about him is that the soldiers who went to retrieve his body found some ammunition in his pocket. So, I mean, naturally, one will ask what he was doing with ammunition in his pocket. So such a person cannot uh, easily be classified as a victim. Um, so that's why I never spoke about that. But those who were shot and killed yesterday, uh, clearly, that was dastardly, that was unacceptable. And the perpetrators must be searched for by the law enforcement agencies and dealt with. Uh, and then in Bolgatanga, some you know unknown persons went and uh, attacked and killed uh, one of our former assemblymen and uh, who is a lecturer at a technical university, and not just shot and killed him, but they uh, used cutlasses and all sorts of machetes and mutilated. His, his body, I mean, uh, this is really dastardly. This is unacceptable. Uh, my condolences go to his wives and children and the family and his community. And uh, clearly, um, the situation in Boku is indeed uh, deteriorating badly. And unfortunately, is extending to other parts of the country. A um, couple of days ago, uh, residents of Boku living in Accra actually engaged in um, gunfire exchanges. Uh, some months ago, um, there were similar assaults in Ashama. Um, and, and so increasingly, you know, it is getting outside Boku and then mm. uh, citizens of Boku in different parts of the country, um, you know, attacking one another. I think that government uh, has to be honest and do the right things uh, to bring closure to the situation in, in Boku. Uh, running away from the problem, uh, sending soldiers and stationing soldiers in Boku clearly has not solved the problem. Uh, there are underlying issues. Instead of government confronting the issues uh, boldly and dealing with them, they have shoveled it to uh, His Majesty uh, Otunfo. So I want to use this platform to call on um, His Majesty Otunfo to um, look into the matter and try mm -hmm. and bring closure to the issues. Uh, just being silent and not taking action, as I can see being done by government, is not the solution to the problem in Boku. Sending more soldiers to Boku is not the solution to the problem. But being frank and honest and, and, and dealing with the issues resolutely uh, is what will bring closure to the situation. Meanwhile, I want to appeal to all sides uh, to stop what they are doing, this mm. attempt to begin to attack one another outside Boku, in Borgatanga, in Accra, in Walwale, on the roads to Tamale, and etc. Uh, between Boku and Borgatanga, in Zebila, Binduri, all those, all those, all those things. In Kusuga, you know, in all those uh, districts around us, mm. it, it will not help. So I'm appealing to everybody to. To, to seize those uh, attacks and uh, edge government. Right. It's a very important appeal uh, there. But don't know why I got 
I want you to sit back a bit for me because um, you're too close to your camera and part of your head has been cut off. So sit back for me, okay, please. Now, beyond what Otufose II II is doing in trying to bring last and peace in Boko, what else can he do, really? I'm, I'm asking this because of the appeal that you just made to him to, you know, step into the matter, which I obviously we do know that he's engaged in the effort to bring lasting peace in Boko. What else can he do? So that there are there are two major actors. You have the Nairi uh, head of the Mamprugo Kingdom, and then you have the Zugrana, who is the uh, head of the Kosa traditional area. Those are the two major actors in this. And of course, their followers and their sub-chiefs and their subjects. Uh, I believe that uh, these two revere respect and will uh, yield to uh, the Otunfo when he engages them. So um, government has referred the matter to uh, Otunfo to look into it and try and resolve. Uh, in all fairness, I put everything at the doorsteps of, of government. Government has failed the people of Boku. Uh, they have been inconsistent in, 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 in terms of their um, uh, dealings with the issues in Boku. They say one thing and do another thing. They have never been firm on on positions that they have taken on the issues in Boku. And this, this lack of, you know, candor, this uh, uh, consistent flip-flopping, this saying one thing and doing another thing, is really what has, you know, given room for people to lead us along the road that they have taken that has brought us to where we are. Well, and, you know, uh, after really failing the people of Boku, they've showed off the matter to Otunfo to, to deal with. I don't know if they are giving him the right support that he needs to, to deal with the problem, but be that as it may, the matter is before him, and I have confidence in him and his ability to stamp his authority to, uh, to get in chieftaincy matters and get his peers uh, to, to, to align, reason with him, I, I see, and to come to some understanding, right? But oh my God. so the, you see, the, the point you make about the, the the government and what's happening in Boko, that there's been that concern that has been raised as well that politics has also influenced the protracted Boko conflict and what's going on now, because when the NPP is in power, one faction feels emboldened to do something. The NDC in some power, another faction, the other faction feels emboldened to also perpetuate what we are seeing. That's what has been going on. That's the reality of the Bokuk situation. You are there right, and you know better about the influence of the politics in this Bokuk conflict. That certainly must concern you in the analysis of all this, is it not? I... I will say that politics has not helped um, in the sense that the matter in Boku was resolved rightly in favor of Usasis as far back as the colonial times. The governor general before he left the shores of Ghana resolved the matters in favor of uh, the processes and said that, look, uh, the best arrangement that we could have is for processes to rule themselves and not to have processes being ruled over by Mampushis. Subsequently, governments came and changed the arrangement. And of course, the, 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 the hands of government playing uh, the game of politics and you know, shifting the goalposts and all that has has played a major role in sustaining the fight and the conflict as it is. But 
you know, I think we've gotten to a point where uh, the major political parties, both NDC and MPP, and the governments that they have both formed, have come to accept that the place has to be ruled by Kosatsis because that is their land, and uh, so they should rule themselves. With this kind of uh, understanding having evolved, I expect that the MPP government will firmly try to implement this uh, uh, position that they have publicly you know, announced. But their failure to match their action with their words is really what is uh, sustaining the, the situation that we find in, in Boku now. The NPP must match you know, its uh, rhetoric with, with action to, to show that they are convinced that Kosasis must rule themselves. Uh, if they just say it, and yet uh, that position is undermined by the actions of others, and they don't take action to enforce that position, we'll continue to have this unfortunate development that we see uh, around us. So yes, politics is, is a major uh, cause of what is happening, but I hope that very soon uh, we'll get over that. Certainly. And that's the hope that I'm sure that you, you also have in high esteem. And then also the appeal that you made earlier when we started this conversation, very important. Thank you so much, uh, Mama Yago, for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. Now, let's stay a bit further on this because Castro Senyala is a journalist based in the Upper East region. He's been following this for us here on Ghana Tonight. He's connecting with us live from... Uh, a part of the Upper East region, not Boko, for his safety. Um, Castro, good evening. Thank you for connecting with us. Now, we understand that a second person has been confirmed dead as a result of the renewed clashes in Boko, but this time it happened in Bogatanga. Who is this person? Unmute, unmute for me, unmute. Yes, good evening to you, Alfred, if you can hear me. I can hear you. Clear. Yes, so... Uh... Yes, uh, rightly, uh, like you said, uh, the second person has been confirmed dead, and he is uh, the lecturer uh, that um, the Honorable MP was uh, talking about. Uh, we understand that he's uh, been identified as uh, one Mr. Al Hassan uh, Azuma, who was a lecturer and, in fact, the deputy uh, registrar uh, of the school. Uh, we understand that. Which, he was which school? Which president. school exactly? That is the Bogatanga uh, Technical University. All right. Yes. So we understand that he was attacked um, at his residence in Boga, uh, where the assailants uh, reportedly shot him multiple times before, um, you know, uh, cutting his body in, in addition with uh, using sharp objects said to be, uh, cut, I mean, suspected to be cutlasses. Um, yes. So, Alfred, uh, that incident alone has, um, I mean, created some sort, brought some sort of, um, conversation within the Upper East Regional Capital Borgo Tanga, because this is not the first time an attempt of that nature has been made, except that this time around, uh, uh, the issue uh, of Azuma was successful. Uh, far back uh, as last year, there was also um, a similar incident where uh, a man who traces his origin to Boko uh, reportedly was attacked, but he uh, somehow uh, escaped on head. Then again, uh, if we go to the Binduru district, uh, the National uh, Democratic Congress uh, chairman in that, uh, for that constituency, the Binduru constituency was also reportedly um, attacked. But then he also, uh, the, the, per what we guarded, the assailants went and were ransacking his home, thinking he was in there, but then he had also gone out. So it was later on that residents teamed up and drove those assailants away. Then we come to the Castana and West District, um, somewhere around uh, uh, the Serigo areas, where an NDC uh, man was also, a past NDC executive, regional executive, I beg your pardon, was also attacked and uh, killed. He was also killed by unknown assailants in the same fashion as we uh, recorded or we saw of, uh, or we are hearing of Azuma's incident. And uh, so I'm just trying to, um, bring these um, uh, things into the picture so that we understand um, why the conversation 
in the region is rife and people are raising concerns about the safety of residents, not only um, in connection with the uh, uh, the Boko conflict, but how the Boko conflict is spreading further into other parts like the Honorable I mean, MP stated. I see. Now, he mentioned areas like uh, Bogotanga, obviously, where the, the lecturer has been has been murdered, Zebila, Binduri, and Pusiga, and these other areas. T tell me what, what the people in these areas you have been talking to, what have they been saying about the, the, these renewed clashes? Yes, first off, I would like to start with uh, what I've seen on a WhatsApp message that I, I'm sorry, a WhatsApp platform that I'm part of, where people have begun raising concerns and some even saying that looking at the trend of the conflict and how it is spreading, uh, the, the advice is for people to begin to move out of the region. Because if uh, Boko is nearly uh, 100 meters away from the regional capital and then uh, people come in to the regional capital to perpetuate, um, I mean, murders, where, and, and then later we it, it's discovered that it's linked to the conflict, you know, uh, there's a concern among residents, which has to do the fact that people have to begin to leave the region. And also, another very, I mean, interesting thing that has triggered this conversation has to do with the fact that if you remember somewhere last month, last year, there was an attack along the Boku uh, Road in the Nabdam district, where some people, I mean, a bus was attacked and some people killed. And so it appears to be like the the attacks are spreading further into, uh, I mean, to the other parts of the region. Like the Honorable MP stated, aside from um, the Navrongo areas, uh, Sandema, uh, Paga areas, which, I mean, where we haven't, I mean, recorded any attacks that have connections or that have links to the Boko conflict, the rest of the region, and as far as uh, Walwale, are places with recorded such incidents. And people are beginning to get worried. And in fact, calling on security agencies to do more, especially in uh, uh, being able to make arrests of perpetrators uh, in, uh, who uh, carry out attacks as recent as what, as, I mean, the, uh, the one that was carried on on the late Azuma and all the other unsolved, I mean, attacks that are still uh, 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 fresh in the minds of residents of the Upper East region. Appreciate this detail. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alfred. Great. That's uh, it's, uh, a reporter in the Upper East region um, following the situation in Boko municipality for us here on Ghana tonight. Coming up next, the administrative work in some, in fact, in the public universities begin to stall our senior staff association of universities in Ghana have been backed on an indefinite strike. We we'll hear from them because the National Labor Commission has summoned them. What next for them? Stay with us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. I'm ready. This new year, Go TV is stepping up your entertainment at no extra cost to you. Yahoo! If you're on Go TV Value, upgrade to Go TV Plus and watch Go TV Max already on Go TV Plus. Then upgrade to Go TV Max to enjoy Go TV Super. And if you're on Go TV Max, upgrade to Go TV Super to enjoy the best of the best on Go TV Super Plus. Don't wait for the best sport, international entertainment, and local shows. Step up today. It's on us. Go TV. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, flamingo has painted a much larger area you know one bucket of flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability superior hiding superior coverage flamingo paint simply superior For the quickest and efficient way of keeping your clothes and garments clean, 
Franco Trading Enterprise has brought in a new washing machine for you and your home. This washing machine comes in sizes. We have the smaller size and the bigger size. This washing machine is easy to operate. It saves time and energy. It extends the life of your clothes. And the most exciting part of it all is that it has low power consumption. So for bulk purchasing and retailing, visit any of our branches nationwide or on our website at www.francotrading.com. You can call the numbers on the screen for any assistance. Franco Trading Enterprise. This is your moment to discover new heights of pride and passion. A moment to forget the past and to rewrite history. It's your moment. Make it your moment to be moved by every play and to experience every minute of Africa's grandest football showbiz. It's your AFCON moment. Experience all 52 games of the Africa Cup of Nations in HD the way you like it. Live on Supersport and DSTV Stream. The pastors, the prophet, the evangelist, we are the one empowering them even to do the work of God better. Back on a journey like no other. <laughs> Since I'm married to the Queen, I can call myself a power tie. It is dangerous because we the water children, our ways of life is different from ordinary people. Discover the ancient traditions that have shaped the nation. The spirit guides your physical. So know your Join me as I unveil the secrets of Ghana's spiritual healers. We have some of the obituary sevia. We have to call Nase, we have to inform Nase, we have to call Nase to be there. Ah, what the bah? We are here, Mamre Nama. Meet the healers who bridge the gap between this world and the divine. Me, me, a pastor, Pentecost, and I, in Abeyin. There is no Jesus going to come. Journey with me, God in your city, bah. Through stories of transformation and hope. Searching for a God, unveiling Ghana's traditional path, a documentary that will touch your soul. Searching for a God airs on January 24th at 9 p.m. on TV3 across all social media platforms. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Desi V Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. The indefinite strike action by the senior staff of the universities of Ghana, that's the various public universities, about 16 of them, has begun to bite on some of the students in the universities across the and the technical universities as well across the country now we'll tell you some of the what some of the students have been telling us here on ghana tonight when we interacted with them on their various campuses earlier today but the national labor commission has stepped into this matter they have issued a, a summons on the senior staff association of the universities of ghana they were supposed to have appeared for a meeting today but let's understand their concerns Isaac Donko is a chair of the Senior Staff Association of the Universities in Ghana. Mr. Donko, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. First of all, amongst other things, you've stated that government's persistent disregard for the welfare of you, the senior staff of the universities, is what has led to this indefinite strike. What is the issue with the tier two pension schemes? Why is government not paying you your money? Very disappointing. And it's so sad that uh, government will be quick in deducting our tier two pension, but will delay in remitting our farm managers. If you ask me that person, I may not be the right person or the right person to answer you. 
Because the minister for a rational person to answer this, why they will be quick in deducting the two, the tier two pension mentally, but they can't do same when they have to give the money to our fund managers. Uh, it also presupposes that Ghana, we are, we are Ghana in Ghana, we are quick in establishing laws, but we don't respect the laws that we've established in this country. It's just unfortunate that. I say, but I'm sure you've, you've been asking questions. You've been asking questions of the of the minister. Um, about why your money is your tier two deductions are not being paid to you. What what's been the reason? Series of letters to them, phone calls, text messages. We are not getting response. The few response that we had indicate that there's no money in the system, and it's unfortunate. And we are not requesting for extra money to be given to us. We are just requesting that government should release the money that they deducted from our salaries. These are our own monies. So they should give it to us. We are not requesting for anything extra. It is not beyond them. Whoever the monies are, whoever is responsible for those things, should own up, release the funds, unless our pension... Yeah, but enjoy. as you indicated, this is your tier two pension, your own deductions they, did, they took from your money. So how long has this government doesn't have money reason been given by the minister? stated in our community since February 2023 uh, nothing has come through so it has been long over 10 months Mr. Donko, uh, thank you so much for this and um, at least giving us this information about what's going on we're still monitoring the impact of this strike on the various universities and technical universities across the country and we'll definitely be having a lot more conversation with you um, in the coming days. He's a chair of the Senior Staff Association of the Universities in Ghana. Thank you for joining us. Now, uh, this is what the National Labor Commission said about this strike, uh, this indefinite strike. It said the National Labor Commission, in exercise of its power under Section 139 of the Labor Act 2003, rise to summon the parties to appear before the commission on Thursday, that was today. What we understand was that the university's senior staff did not go for this meeting because they received the notice for this summons late. That's, the, that's the, their statement. Respectfully request for an extension in respect of the date for the appearance before the commission to Wednesday, 24th of July, that's January, I beg your pardon, 24th of January, 2024. This request is necessary because of a number of reasons that they give, uh, reason why they cannot attend to or they did not attend to the summons of the National Labor Commission earlier today. But this is a conversation that's not ending anytime soon because this indefinite strike declared by the Senior Staff Association of the Universities, Public Universities in Ghana, is taking a huge toll on especially the students who are preparing for the examinations, those who are writing exams already and need access to the libraries and uh, the level hundreds as well who have started the admission process. So this is one that we'll keep an eye on and be updating you, our viewers. On behalf of the team, thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. You have a good night, despite the Black Stars, you know, almost disappointing showing. We have hope. And our next match, hopefully, we go through with the mathematics. On behalf of the rest of the team, have a good night. I am Alfred Akansi. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint. Superior durability. Superior hiding. Superior coverage. Simply superior.